Today, Vincent van Gogh is probably one of the world's most famous artists, but in his lifetime he sold only one artwork. Van Gogh was a prolific letter writer. 819 of his letters survive and provide a fascinating insight into his life. They reveal to us his creative process, thoughts, ideas, and inspirations, and his daily preoccupations. Most of the letters are to his brother Theo, who was an art dealer. They are often thank yous for money that Theo had sent. My dear Theo, thank you very much for your letter and for the 50 franc note it contained. Sometimes Van Gogh seemed to not care about money. So what does selling any of it matter if we're not absolutely pressed for money? But the reality was that he depended on his brother's continued financial support. As regards the end of the month, I ask you most kindly but absolutely, let one of your creditors at least do without fifty francs. They can stand it, rest assured. But please, not me, because even then it will still be tough for me. It is ironic that today Van Gogh's works sell for millions at auction. Indeed, his portrait of Dr. Gachet was, for a time, the most expensive work of art ever sold, commanding a price of $82.5 million at Christie's New York in 1990. Vincent Van Gogh was born in Holland in 1853, but he created many of his most famous works in the south of France. It is clear from his letters that the landscape and lifestyle there inspired him. He wrote to Theo, It's not a rosy prospect that the pains in your leg have come back. My God, it should have to be possible for you to live in the South as well, because I always think that what we need is sunshine and fine weather and blue air as the most dependable remedy. The weather's still fine here, and if it was always like that, it would be better than the painter's paradise. Van Gogh seemed to feel the colors and warmth of southern France closely. In this letter to his sister Will, he describes the house he stayed in, the same one he painted in House at Arles. My house here is painted outside in the yellow of fresh butter, with garish green shutters, and it's in the full sun on the square, where there's a green garden of plane trees, oleanders, acacias. And inside, it's all whitewashed, and the floors of red bricks, and the intense blue sky above. Inside, I can live and breathe and think and paint. And it seems to me that I should go further into the south rather than going back up north, because I have too great a need of the strong heat so that my blood circulates normally. Van Gogh's correspondence shows him to be an individual obsessed with his art. He mentions painting in nearly every letter, and often included small sketches or croquis. He was always passionate about color and new ideas. Many of his most famous works must have started their lives as ink drawings in letters. On October 17, 1888, he sent his friend Paul Gauguin a sketch of what was to become his painting, The Bedroom. It is often said that the slightly skewed perspective of the work is an insight into the artist's troubled mind, but here it is described by Van Gogh as a restful piece, driven by color. In flat tints, but coarsely brushed in full impasto, the walls pale lilac, the floor in a broken and faded red, the chairs and the bed chrome yellow, the pillows and the sheet very pale lemon green, the bedspread blood red, the dressing table orange, the wash basin blue, the window green. I had wished to express utter repose with all these very different tones, you see, among which the only white is the little note given by the mirror with a black frame, to cram in the fourth pair of complementaries as well. Anyway, you'll see it with the others, and we'll talk about it. Van Gogh's knowledge of the visual effects of color on the viewer is evident from his letter, where he discusses his use of analogous color in The Night Café. The room is blood red and dark yellow with a green table in the middle. 
There are four lemon yellow lamps with a glow of orange and green. Everywhere there is a clash and contrast of the most disparate reds and greens. In the empty, dreary room, I have tried to express the idea that the cafe is a place where one can ruin oneself, run mad, or commit a crime. So I have tried to express, as it were, the powers of darkness. He seemed to see everything in the French countryside in radiant color, even the night sky. I definitely want to paint a starry sky now. It often seems to me that the night is even more richly colored than the day, colored in the most intense violets, blues, and greens. If you look carefully, you'll see that some stars are lemonish, others have a pink, green, forget-me-not blue glow. And without laboring the point, it's clear that to paint a starry sky, it's not nearly enough to put white spots on blue-black. Despite his lack of success in selling his artworks, Van Gogh was not completely excluded from the art world. He had been to art school, Theo was an art dealer, and Vincent was good friends with the French painter Paul Gauguin, shown here in his self-portrait. For a time, Van Gogh and Gauguin lived in the same house in Arles. We can trace their friendship and exchange of artistic ideas through their letters. Van Gogh clearly admired Gauguin and wrote, it does me enormous good to have company as intelligent as Gauguin and to see him work. Gauguin respected Vincent as an artist, too, and depicted him painting sunflowers. Gauguin was telling me the other day that he'd seen a painting by Claude Monet of sunflowers in a large Japanese vase, very fine, but he likes mine better. On December 23, 1888, Van Gogh and Gauguin had a violent disagreement. Gauguin fled, and Vincent cut off part of his left ear. His self-portrait shows the right ear bandaged, but perhaps this is because he painted it looking in the mirror. Van Gogh was hospitalized, but once discharged, he tried to renew his friendship with Gauguin. My dear friend Gauguin, I'm taking advantage of my first trip out of the hospital to write you a few most sincere and profound words of friendship. I have thought of you a great deal in the hospital, and even in the midst of fever and relative weakness. So I want you to refrain from saying bad things about our poor little yellow house until more mature reflection on either side. Give my regards to the painters I saw in Paris. I wish you prosperity in Paris, with a good handshake. Ever yours, Vincent. After he had recovered from his physical injury, Vincent's mental state suffered. He admitted himself to an asylum in nearby Saint-Rémy, where he continued to paint prolifically. He even set up an adjacent cell as a studio. Although his art was therapeutic, Vincent still could not find true peace in life. On July 27, 1890, he shot himself in the chest, and two days later he died with Theo by his side. Theo wrote, He had found the rest he could not find on earth. The next morning there came from Paris and elsewhere eight friends who decked the room where the coffin stood with his pictures. Dr. Gachet was the first to bring a bunch of sunflowers, because Vincent was so fond of them.